Good afternoon, everyone. This is the, wow, this is the Law Enforcement Advisory Board for January. Uh, I'm sitting in for Lenora Lattimore. She's under the weather. Uh, hopefully she'll be able to say a few words uh, through Zoom. Uh, let me see. My name is Paul Soptic. Uh, I was uh, appointed by Commissioner Burns in the 2nd District. I used to be in four until they redistrict our uh, our uh, voting districts. Uh, and Dr. Hill will appoint somebody from District 4. Uh, but let's get started with introductions, uh, being as I've already given mine, and we'll start with the Chief. Uh, Chief. Chief Carl Oakman. Dwayne Beth, appointed by Sheriff Soptic. Jim Lockridge, and Sheriff David Patton, uh, Commissioner Townsend, appointed me, District 1. Kenny Rogers, Auditor's Office. Abby Dillard, Mayor's Office. Lodora, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Okay. Lodora uh, Lattimore, appointed by the mayor chair. Sorry, I couldn't be with you today in person. <laughs> Get yourself well. Okay, I'm trying hard. Bill? <laughs> Bill, can you hear us? Yeah, Bill Barajas. Yes. Can you copy? Two, three, four, five. Do you copy me? Eight. Yeah, we hear you. Tip one. Um, Tone to Hill. I am not a member, but represent yeah. DA Dupree from the Wyandotte County District Attorney's Office. Tony Cole with the Unified Government Legal Department. Well, I think we have eight, so that is a quorum now. Uh, first up, uh, let me see, we, we're we going to read the minutes, but I think uh, Lodora, is it Lynn that kept the minutes? She said she was going to be on, but I think we read the last minutes and we didn't have a meeting last time, so we won't have any minutes for this meeting. Sounds good. Uh, the year-end report, we talked about that on the phone. Do you have enough to uh, let the audience know what uh, what's going on for the year-end report? Yes. Um, on the year-end report, it will reflect all of the um, uh, four listening sessions. It will be broken down into all comments and then recommendations uh, to those concerns and um, uh, an agenda for looking forward uh, for 2024. I don't have it in here with me, and um, but I'm still needing information from uh, board members. So hopefully, hopefully, um, we're in January, uh, February, or um, if the commissioners will give us a date in uh, February or March, we'll present this, but it will be a comprehensive report. And then we'll post it everywhere uh, to let the people know that, uh, that attended those uh, listening sessions that we didn't just take their information and do nothing with. Uh, we will give some recommendations on where they can go uh, for these problems or concerns moving forward. Sounds like a plan. Anything else? No, that's all that I have for today. My brain is cloudy, but <laughs> I was able to drum that up to get that out. <laughs> Great. Anybody have anything for Lodora and the year-end meeting? 
Okay, thank you. Chief Oakman, can you bring us up to speed on the PD? All right, just a uh, PD update. Um, 2023 uh, year in uh, crime stats. Um, we finished the year close to uh, historical lows for homicides and violent crime in general. Um, homicides were down 38% uh, compared to 2022. And how that's important is 2022 compared to 2021 was down 25%. Um, so if you go back to 2020, um, the police department ended 2020 with 58 homicides and we ended 2023 with 24. So you can see that's, uh, can't do the math offhand, but that's close to about 60, a 65% decrease in homicides in about three years. Um, violent crime was down overall 27%. Uh, and when you look, uh, when you break it down, um, our rapes, rapes were down 37%. Aggravated batteries, which are uh, any type of assault that creates uh, physical injuries such as shootings, stabbings, beatings. Those were down 41% um, compared to 2022. Um, and one of the big statistics um, when it came to in 2022, we had 15 uh, domestic violence related homicides. In 2023, we ended the year with four domestic violence homicides. That's a decrease of about 75% uh, in domestic violence homicides from 2022 to 2023. Um, in addition, in 2023, uh, we solved four uh, cold case homicides with the oldest one dating back to 1976. Um, as a result of those four cold case homicides, uh, two individuals were charged. One individual was charged for two and the third, uh, the second individual was charged in one and the fourth cold case homicide um, we ended up based on the circumstances um, the suspect had already passed. That was the homicide where we identified a newborn that was left um, in the dumpster in 1976 and hadn't been identified until this year um, through DNA and work from our cold case detectives. In addition, we identified the possible suspect who had already deceased, who have already, who was already deceased um, years prior to us identifying them as the suspect. So that's a round, a uh, <clears throat> overview as far as crime and um, where we're trending uh, and hopefully we will continue um, that lower trend uh, we put in a detailed um, violence reduction plan about a year and a half, as well as in January of 2023, we started implementing a lethality assessment with the help of Friends of Yates um, to address domestic violence. Um, and, and so far, um, it appears that is paying off because overall, domestic violence battery and assaults are also down. So if anyone have any questions, I'll take them at this point. Thank you. I, I have one. It's it's just a question and and uh I've heard I've heard this two or three from two or three different sources. 
when when we talk about our crime being down. And and I for one believe 100% in the in the numbers that we got. But I've heard that some of the crime isn't reported or the reports aren't taken on the street. So those crimes allegedly aren't aren't being reported. So uh, I mean, how, how can we address that? Well, I'll, I'll tell you a good indicator is when you look at homicides, for example. Um, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I doubt if you can not report a homicide. It's a dead body in the house and on the street. Um, and because here's the thing, if crime wasn't reported three years ago, it's going to continue to not be reported. So lack of reporting is not going to, and, and I'll tell you this, that small percentage of people who don't report crimes, that does not fluctuate from year to year. It's usually the same amount of individuals. And we're not talking about major crimes. Most violent crime is always reported. Um, now, where people could say, okay, you're not reporting crimes is more minor thefts, shoplifting. But in my 32 years of experience, I just don't see where people don't report violent crime. You know, you get shot in the, you get shot in the arm, um, it's going to get reported. Even if you go to the hospital, the hospital's going to call the police. Um, you get beat up, it, it's going to get reported. Now, I know there's this <clears throat> perception in KCK because of our undocumented population that people are afraid to go to the police and report crimes. Um, like I said, in my experience on violent crime, that is not not happening. I mean, we we investigate you know, a large amount of undocumented members who call the police who are victims of violent crime. In fact, one of the things that we've seen in the last two years uh, since we created uh, in October of 2021, we created the Hispanic Community Minority Liaison and his job is to reach out to those minority um, populations and specifically our undocumented community. And we've had, since 2022, we've probably had six Spanish language academies. Um, and we've seen our gang activity in those neighborhoods um, drop significantly. And one of the reasons why it was allowed to uh, be at the level it was at was because a lot of times in those communities, they were held hostage by those individuals, making them fear that they couldn't work with the police and allowed them to terrorize their neighborhoods. Well, with these programs, we have, we get more tips from the community um, and in turn, it's reduced that activity significantly. So um, now I, I, I wouldn't say, I mean, the, like I said, the amount of people who are not reporting crimes, um, that percentage is usually around low level crimes and it really hasn't, hasn't changed. And anytime your officers are called to a scene like a, like a theft or, or a burglary or something like that, there's always a report done on those yeah, depending on depending on the circumstances. Like if you go, if you have a theft, someone takes something out the yard, and the officer gets there, um, we're going to take a report unless the victim says they don't want to report. And and that's only the case on theft and low level crimes like that. But on all violent crime, we take a report, we investigate it, and through the investigation process, that's when the victim can say, I don't want to prosecute, but we're going to still investigate any violent crime. 
Okay, I appreciate that. Anybody else have anything? Anybody on Zoom? Well, I just want to say that um, I've been involved in this community for over 50 of my many, many years of being on this earth and worked with um, numerous people in the police department. And one of the things that I want to say about uh, uh, Chief Oakman is that um, he's come to this uh, city uh, with an open mind and uh, with his reporting shows how we're reducing crime in Wyandotte County. And more than that, I am just impressed with the initiatives in terms of community police relations. And as time goes on, how that can be even more enhanced, but we've not seen it at this level in all of my uh, uh, living in Wyandotte County, and that's been my entire life. So I just say kudos to you, uh, Chief. Uh, nothing is perfect. Everything can be better. Anything any of us are working on can be better. But the um, reality is intent, initiative, and one's perspective. Uh, and you just lead in all of those uh, arenas. And so I just want to say, um, on behalf of Friends of Yates and this community, we appreciate you, your department, and your efforts. And when everything, whenever something is bad in there, just weed it out. Um, um, because we are a vocal community too. If it, if if it's not right, we'll show up on that too. But hopefully, um, we'll just continue the positive forward uh, direction you're trying to take this department in. I do believe in that too. Uh, I know that I stay pretty close to the, the gang and the graffiti issues and graffiti is way down. Uh, the SPVs are flexing their muscle every little bit, but uh, but I don't see near the, the the problem that we used to have. And I'm sure it's part of that uh, Hispanic uh, committee you put together. Anybody else? Uh, kind of, uh, kind of bragging with you too. And, uh, and your department. And I always tell people, I say, KCK, we got a really good police department now. We got a really good police department. And I and I tell a lot of people that all the time. We actually have a guy told we got a good chief. We got a good police department now. And I, and I let people know that all the time that we have a good police department in Kansas City, Kansas. Well, I think I think our numbers are way down, so everybody questions that, but that it's, it's yeah. moving the right direction. Yeah. Well, we got good, we've got good officers. We've got really, really good police officers now. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, my dad was a police officer. My uncles were police officers, you know, so I've been around police all my life, you know. But uh, we've got some uh, really good disciplined police officers now, you know, and they know they better be disciplined. They know they get, they better do the right job, you know, now when they was getting away with a lot of stuff. But now they know they need to do what they're supposed to do. And, sure. yeah, and I say the same thing. Thanks. Oh, and, and one of the things that, that we really focused on, and I call it internal value, where you really, when when the officers see, and I can say that in Wyandotte County, when they see the commissioners, the mayor, the DA, all supporting them and showing support, it gives them that internal value. Now, why that's important is, an officer with internal value, it's, we, we always talk about police and community trust, the community trust in the police, which is very important. But there's another other part to that. You want to make sure your police trust the community that they're serving. And so the internal value is what creates that. So you have officers who, instead of just answering that 911 call, and go park and hide till the next 911 call. When they feel their community supports them, they go that extra mile 
They go in that neighborhood. They ask their neighbor, what else is going on? They, they make sure that they identify those people who are causing problems in that neighborhood and go after them. Uh, and that's something that, that they develop um, and not really to, as they say, throw shade. Um, that's kind of what you're not seeing on the other side of the river, um, you know, based on the treatment and some of the stuff that they've, how they've been treated. And so it's important. It's a real thing because you have to realize uh, the police officers are people too. They hear what people are saying about them. So I'm like, why would I risk myself when these people don't even care about me? Why would I risk my life, my career to go above and beyond? So, um, you know, my son told me something and he's over at Casey Mo, been there for two years. He said, Dad, we're more afraid of getting charged by the prosecutor than shot and killed in the line of duty. Now, do you think they're going to go above and beyond? Wow. So, so, but my point is, thank you to all of you that really, and I'm not talking about knuckleheads or when we do dumb stuff. No, don't, don't support us on that. No. But if you don't, I know you don't realize it, but, and some of you in here that are officers, we fire a lot of people that you don't even know about. I've fired 12 people since I've been the chief in June of 2021. So we fire a lot of people. We discipline a lot of people and we get disciplined for a lot of stuff that you wouldn't get disciplined for if you worked at Sprint. But the point is, thank you to all of you showing that support because it means a lot to the men and women that are out there um, patrolling these streets. Yeah, I think it's mutual trust, and I think we're light years ahead of where we used to be, and we appreciate all the uh, initiatives that, that you've brought forward. Thank you. Anybody else have anything for the chief? Sheriff's Department. Sheriff's Department. I'll echo that sentiment of the chief about the community support. We really appreciate it, and a lot of the community initiatives that we're partnering on is really showing dividends when it comes to uh, the reporting of crime, us being able to get information during investigations and things like that, all that stuff is improving. <clears throat> and also with our uh, manpower, I think it's, I don't know about the PD, but we're starting to see a bit of an uptick in applications. We have a class of five to six starting next week we have a testing next week that we have 18 applicants. We haven't had that in a long time. Fantastic. So things are looking up. And with that, we've been able to make several promotions. We've added to our sergeant rank, <clears throat> added a couple of sergeants. So we're able to beef up that and let our folks do more of the duties they're assigned to do instead of picking up different duties. But we're able to do that, added a detective, so we're, uh, we're able to add, also add another body into our offender registration unit so we can make sure that we're on top of that stuff. I know everybody uh, wants to make sure that those folks that have to report in are doing that and doing the home checks and all of that stuff. So all those things, this increase in manpower is allowing us to do a lot of those things. Uh, with the weather this week, we're... Uh, offering overtime to our guys to get out. You see people out here that's out in this severely cold weather. And UG is having uh, warming stations and those things are gonna be up, some shelters. So we're gonna be out to assist with that too. We'll have some extra bodies out this weekend just to help out in addition to the regular guys that's patrolling. Other than that, oh, we have a whole responder starting at the end of this month. So Cold responders gonna primarily help with field operations with people with mental health crisis. That's gonna help us better assess folks that we're coming in contact with, and get them the help that they need. Um, also gonna extend that to Edwardsville and Bonham. So our our uh, 
deputies that patrol there will also utilize that response. Responding will be not necessarily riding with deputies, but responding as needed to those uh, those calls and stuff. That's about all we got. Super. Any, any questions? Anybody have any questions for the sheriff's department besides me? How's how's your uh, manpower? Uh, are you, are you still short or? We're still short, and I don't know if we'll ever not be short, <laughs> you know, but we're, we're getting better, and we're we're able to uh, entertain different different uh, units within the organization, things that we'd like to be able to do, but we haven't been able to do through the manpower. We're able to entertain those now, like the offender registration unit. It's been short-staffed for a while. We're able to add another body hoping to be able to add another one once we get more people. But those things we're feeling, the Bonner and Edwardsville definitely want our assistance and we're gonna be able to do, provide that as we continue to increase manpower. Uh, numbers, uh, how, how many short do you have that? Uh, that's kind of subjective, depending on what, what we're talking about. As far as uh, detention, I would say we're in the 20 to 30 range as far as personnel. Yeah. Apartment wide, we're probably more of a solid 30 range. A lot better than it used to be. A lot better than it used to be. Absolutely. Fantastic. Chief, how, how short are we on the on the PD? Um, we're um, we're usually about 20%. Um, so we we pretty optimistic the last since 2021. We've hired like 78 officers, but you lose them through retirement. And uh, this year in 2023, uh, we didn't have as many retirements as we've had in the past. Um, we next week, let's see, well, in two weeks, 25th, we start a class of 12. So um, we're uh, we've been pretty pretty optimistic. We're seeing a we see, we're seeing a shift of people moving back towards uh, law enforcement. And, that, and that's a good thing. Anybody have anything else for the our law enforcement? Uh, we've got a report from Reed Partridge, and he is not here, but he's got uh, uh, Danny Rogers. Would you like to tell us about yourself? And Yes, uh, Danny Rogers, I'm an auditor. Um, currently, the legislate Reed got a promotion. I'm sure you all know that. Um, but due to that, the legislative um, law enforcement auditor position is open. The application is live, and we're just kind of waiting for some applicants and to interview and all that kind of stuff. Until then, our office will still be available to you guys, um, and we'll still be issuing reports and stuff, just not through one sole contact of Reed. Um, in December, we issued a follow-up audit to our 2022 um, Victims of Crime Act grant compliance audit um, for the KCKPD, and the findings were the same. Um, the governor's office offered a waiver during COVID for the um, percentage match that cities have to do, um, but when the police officers at KCKPD asked the governor's office, are we eligible for that, they advised against using the waiver and just paying the full amount that we had been paying. Um, just not to compromise their future grant allowances. Um, so the findings were the same this go around when we did our follow up. Um, and that's about it. Did everybody get a copy of the report? I just want to make sure that, okay. Um, and I think that's it from our office. So it might be me again next time, it might be somebody else from our office. Maybe it'll be the new law enforcement auditor. But yeah, that's our report. Thank you. Does anybody have anything that uh, the board can sink its teeth into and, and look into, or uh, shall we just uh, continue the, the path we're on? Lodora says closing remarks, so uh, I'm not as eloquent as you, but uh, would you like to close it up? Maybe she already has. <laughs> if that's it, let's uh, let's adjourn. <laughs>